Yes, we are talking about Phantom Nightmare today because I don't care to talk about a remote dual YCS that had 300 people in Exosister 1 because it doesn't matter. Exosister's still a rogue deck and I would say probably at least half of the people in that Discord chat were somehow cheating. For those of you who are new to the channel, I feel that remote duels are pointless because the majority of the people are cheaters anyway and it was only 300 people compared to 1,000 plus people at a normal YCS. It's just my humble opinion. So. Let's talk about something that actually matters, shall we? Let's dab on into it. That opening is bound to tick somebody off, but like, it is what it is. That's my opinion. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so that we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder, strap on some nipple tassels, flick them for me, and call me dad, because Phantom Nightmare is our next next core set, I think. I put enough nexes in that. Um... After Age of Overlord. So we get Duelist Nexus, then we get Age of Overlord, and then we get, which probably be like a year after Nexus or something like that at that point, we get Phantom Nightmare. Now, why is everyone, including me, have hard nipples over this? Well, other than the fact that I am a hairy chested gorilla and that's normal for me, <laughs> uh, Phantom Nightmare is a precedent of the name of Phantom of darkness or i think it was just called phantom darkness anyway besides the point for those of you who are not a dinosaur like me phantom darkness came out around 2008 i believe phantom darkness was i would argue one of the first Yu-Gi-Oh sets where we really started to see power creep come in roughly set over set so like core set after core set phantom darkness had cards that are still played or even were played for years upon years after the set's release we're talking Allure of Fucking Darkness, which is still played to this day in Dark Decks. You had Dark Arm Dragon, which was a $250 secret rare. And a bunch of these cards were short printed as hell because back during this time when Phantom Darkness came out, Upper Deck Entertainment handled the distribution of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, you know, you weren't guaranteed, say, like how we're guaranteed like a secret now in each box and stuff like that. The ratios were much different. So you had $250 Dark Arm Dragons. You had like, I think Allure Darknesses were like $30 to $40. You had Super Ancient Deep Sea King Kaleocanth. I believe Fishboard Blaster was also in Phantom Darkness. And then you, of course, also have, which is something that people have been buying out like crazy, you had the Ubel cards. So people are thinking now that with Phantom Nightmare, we're going to see retrains of stuff from Phantom Darkness potentially, or even archetype-based cards for Ubel. Now, to get the obvious things out of the way, we'll prob- if they go down this route, we'll probably see Neos Kluger come to the TCG finally, because if I recall... Uh, correctly, Neos Kluger is not yet in the TCG. We may even see a Phantom of Chaos reprint because Phantom of Chaos debuted in Phantom of Darkness. Now, for those of you who don't know what Phantom of Chaos is, basically Phantom of Chaos is a similar version to Prisma, except it has zero attack and defense. It not only copies the name of the monster, but it also copies the attack stat, but it can't do any damage. So you could dump out, say, a Raphael Lord of Phantasm from your deck to the grave, and then your Phantom of Chaos will have the name Raviel and then also have 4,000 attack points until the end of the turn. So you could use it to like run over a card or something and like just have the opponent not take any damage. It, it doubled up basically as a Prisma, but then also it doubled up as a way to have a big beat stick with modifiable attack. It just couldn't actually do any damage on its own. Uh, it's honestly the main reason, along with Prisma by extension, why you see a lot of cards in today's game, say the original name of X card, because Phantom of Chaos and Prisma copy the name of the card, so it's not the original name. Like if you look at the creator God of Light Heracity, it says you have to tribute three monsters whose original names are Slifer, Obelisk, and Raw. You can't just use three Phantom of Chaos. I'll stump the three god cards, and there you go, Sugar Boo Bear. No, 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 no. That's not how that card works. <laughs> not that it would really help it be broken at all. So, what a lot of people are hoping for out of this set is that we see like U Bell support or see U Bell become an archetype. You know, back when Phantom of Chaos or Phantom of Chaos, Phantom Darkness, I gotta keep my name straight, first came out, you didn't really have archetypes back then. You had good shit dot decks, you know, like Dark Arm was a good card. The Ubel cards were just kind of whatever. You know, you could get away with playing cards like Limit Reverse to special summon back the Ubel and then pop the Limit Reverse to then pop the Ubel and all that. The issue that Ubel faces is that the cards inherently are just massive bricks. Like, 
if I remember correctly off the top of my head, Ultimate Nightmare is basically a worse version of Red Dragon Archfiend. Like it pops all other monsters, but like that's sort of it. So I feel like to answer the question, what is it that Ubel could be given to actually become a viable deck or at least something semblance of an archetype? I feel like it's better to ask the question, what is it that they don't need? Because like you could give them a bunch of stuff under the sun. It just needs to actually be good. So I'm extremely excited. I've been a fan of Ubel for years. Like I remember trying to play a Ubel deck at locals for a while and it's it's just such a cool concept. It's basically like the, the three Ubel monsters, Ubel and then Terra Incarnate Ultimate Nightmare if you think about it, are basically versions of Makonko before Makonko was ever a thing, having to rely on equip spells to make the opponent take the damage and stuff like that. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they do. Now, other things that make your boy hard. Could we see retrains of old cards from Phantom Darkness, i.e. Super Ancient Deep Sea King Kaleocanth or even Fishboard Blaster? You know, Deep Sea King Kaleocanth was played in Fish OTK for years. So same thing with Fishboard Blaster. Fishboard Blaster is banned. I don't know if maybe they'll really go down the fish route, but I think seeing new fish cards in like the form of like Fish OTK being able to use Deep Sea King Kaleocanth would be really cool. At the same time, though, similar with Phantom Darkness, if they do go down the route of like Phantom Nightmare and giving dark decks dark, you know, more dark support. It makes me wonder if we'll see a retrain of like Dark Refer or Armageddonite where they're like hard once per turn cards because those cards are still played and were played for years and those cards have been hit on a ban list or on our ban list currently for a reason because those cards are just so damn good. They're from a non once per turn time, you know what I mean? So it'll be interesting to see if they go down that route at all. Going along with that, could we see a brand new Allure of Darkness-esque card where they make it a hard once per turn, but it's more draw engine for dark decks? I don't feel like that they should do that because Allure of Darkness is already just such an amazing card. Like it's basically a destiny draw. And so giving another piece of draw support for dark based decks, I feel like would be a bit too overpowered and a bit too generically good. You know, dark attribute is arguably the most broken attribute in the game, just like how dragon type is arguably the most broken type in Yu-Gi-Oh. Along with dragon, we need to talk about a big dark armed one in the room. Could we see a retrain of dark armed dragon? <sighs> dark armed dragon is one of my favorite cards in the game, next to light and darkness dragon. But <sighs> I feel like there's no argument to be made for that. You know, Dark Arm Dragon is still like a powerful card in 2023. It's just the ability to get exactly three dark monsters in your graveyard consistently, consistently doesn't seem all that good, but the effect itself is still broken. I don't feel like that they're gonna release like a sort of synchro or even a link or like another exceed retrain of Dark Arm. I wouldn't even wanna see an effect monster retrain of Dark Arm. In fact, I would rather see support specifically designed for either like Arm Dragon decks where they can fit in Dark Arm Dragon or specifically Dark Arm Dragon support, like being able to search it. You know, a monster 2800 attack, 1000 defense, level 7, add it to your hand. Something like a Tenacity of the Monarch. Um, but you could use it to get Dark Arm Dragon. Or if they were to do a retrain, this is something I was thinking about too. Could we see a light arm dragon where instead of having to have exactly three darts, you have to have exactly three lights. So you have a light version of dark arm or building off of that. Could we see a fusion monster of dark arm dragon? That would be fucking cool. That, that, that makes my anus get tight. Just thinking about it. Could you imagine if we had like, I don't know, a twin headed dark arm dragon, like how we have twin headed thunder dragon, we have that fusion, but then they make twin headed dark arm dragon. Oh my God, ladies and gentlemen, it, it, it would make sense though, if they did something with dark arm dragon in the set, you know, think about all the times that dark arm has been reprinted, whether it's been a super rare gold rare, whatever you've got the ghost rare, the original secret rare, the quarter century secret rare, like out the ass secret rare. Like you have all of these versions of dark arm because it's such a well-known card in the game because of how damn powerful and expensive it was and how it was played in tier zero Teledad. And like, if you had crush card, you were guaranteed to top any event that you went to. I think that the possibilities for this set are endless. Now, when it comes to investing, should you invest in this set? 
if we start seeing cards on YGO organization, which I, I know it's a shameless plug, but you're going to want to hit the bell because we're going to be keeping up all the date, all up, everything up to date on the channel about what comes out of Phantom Nightmare and what's going to be going on with this set because I'm very excited for this set. Um, if we start seeing cards like Ubel retrains and Ubel support and like retrains of these cards that were out of Phantom Darkness or like they expand upon the support for it, yes, you are going to want to buy one, possibly even two cases of this set. You know, a good way to judge a set, at least in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2023, is to ask yourself, is this Rise of the Duelist level? Like that's how I kind of view stuff now, because if you think about it, Rise of the Duelist was really similar to like Power of the Elements. I would argue that maybe Power of the Elements was a little bit better than Rise of the Duelist. If not, then definitely like on the same level as Rise. If a set comes out and like it's Rise of the Duelist level good, yeah, you're going to want to buy one to two cases of a set, usually just one. I mean, I would say like 95% of the community can't afford to buy two cases unless you get them for like $650 a piece. Then yeah, sure, go out and buy two cases. You sit on that for a couple of years and you multiply your money by five, like at the least, because a set like that is just going to gain value over time. Like, you know that they're going to max rarity the shit out of like quarter century secret rares. Like anything that's not a quarter century secret rare in Monstrous Revenge or like the reprint tins and stuff near the end of the year, you know that they're going to put in like future sets like Phantom Nightmare. If they do you bell stuff, we'll see you bell as a quarter century secret rare. We may see a lure of darkness as a quarter century secret rare, like all of these things. Um, it, it's, it's got me really, really excited because, you know, keep in mind, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively. I went to my first locals in 2008, uh, two weeks before they changed the name of the fusion deck to the extra deck. So like, I remember playing against stuff like Dark Arm, Gladiator Beast at full power and all of this stuff. Like it, it, it's very nostalgic for me and it takes me back to, you know, that time when I was a kid, J just seeing that name Phantom Nightmare brought me back to when I was first walking into Dan's Sports Cards and Games. Again, shout out to Dan, fantastic locals here in Jacksonville and, and meeting friends that I'm still friends with to this day, meeting Valley D and his brother and other people in the community. And it, it's, it's really got me feeling in the nostalgia bone. And uh, I'm really excited to see if they're gonna do some retrains of stuff. But yeah, if they start doing retrains of like you bell stuff, dark arm support, whatever the case may be, you're going to want to buy into this set, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not just trying to be hyperbolic. You better prepare your wallets, prepare your ultra balls, because it's going to cost a lot of money if they go down that route. Or I could be a complete moron and they may say, here's new tri-brigade support and it's just going to be dog water. <laughs> Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see in Phantom Nightmare. Or do you even care about this set? And do you even care that Exosister won a remote dual YCS that was probably filled with a decent amount of cheaters? So that's just my opinion on remote duels. Guys, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.